Welcome back. I'm John Cole Morgan and I am incredibly excited about this hour because I'm introducing a very, very first block of the week. So many of you may not know what a block of the week is. So what we normally do is we make a quilt over a year. So it, it's a block of the month. So you get one block a month and you then sew it up when you get time and you then at the end of the year have a block. Of course, at the moment, we all have a little bit more time. So we were thinking of a way of being able to help keep you entertained, get you involved with different projects and being able to do different things. And I won't deny, I am phenomenally proud of this because, where is it? I've lost it. I managed to get my name on a salvage. So I'm so proud of this. Anybody who's ever had any aspirations for any form of quilting, fabric, anything, to have your name on a salvage is incredibly, incredibly, awe-inspiring. I just never thought that would be something that would happen. I am so proud of this design. It is something that I want that people can look at and realize that as a beginner you can take part because then what you'll do is you'll learn the easier blocks first and then we're going to get and progress as the weeks go on to a slightly more difficult block and to show you how you can improve your techniques along the way. If you're an intermediate, you'll already know some of these techniques, so that'll be a bit of a boost for you, being able to say, oh, I know that, I can do that. So you'll be able to then do some of the easier blocks without, any, without too much help. And then if you're advanced, then you're going to be able to just make sure you cement your um, knowledge on it and know that you're knowing exactly what you're doing. You're going to be spending a little bit extra more time making sure your points are precise, and that's what will be suitable for every single person taking part in this. So I'm going to show you now the design that I've come up with. I'm so excited. We've done it in three different colorways. Obviously, I'm going to start with the blue because blue is my favorite color. And I absolutely love this blue. And as I lay this out, you'll be able to see we've got 12 completely different blocks, all very different. I've got my sewing machine a little bit in the way there, so I'm going to slide this out of the way. Got it. You can just see these gorgeous blocks all so different and they just pop so so well because I think it's really important that you have a design of something that is something a little bit easier that you can then warm up to if you like and then a little bit harder that you can work into to be able to make sure that you're getting these exactly the way they should be so you can see those little flying geese triangles over there. They're not easy, that one, because that's where you really need to focus and make sure you get your points just right. So this is the blue colorway. Obviously the first one, because it's blue. And then we've got our brights colorway here. And I'm going to take the vintage down as well, save me getting it off. So this is our brights colorway. And you can see just how different they all look in the different fabrics. And all of these, these are the same design. It's exactly the same design. All it is, is we're trying to bring you three different colorways. Sorry, I've got my demo fabric floating away in the wind there. We wanted to bring you three different colorways because not everybody loves blue. Some people prefer something a bit more bright. It's just so bright and vibrant. Might remind you a little bit of Easter. And the great thing is, is because if you're able to take part in this, you'll be able to do this in 12 weeks for the blocks. And then we've got a 13th week where I'll show you how to do your sashing and your borders. And the way we're structuring it is you're going to be able to get all of your pattern and your fabric from us exclusively. And you will be able to have everything in one delivery. It'll all come in one spot and you'll get tuition on each and every block each time every Friday at 9 a.m. That will be the time for the block of the week. Forgive me while I try and do acrobatics. There we go. And let me check if I've got this the right way around. There we go. I haven't. <laughs> So the great thing about this one as well, this, this fabric is absolutely gorgeous. All of these fabrics are completely exclusive to Sewing Street. Can't get these anywhere else. But while I've got this here and I've finished showing you, I'm going to ask Joe to bring his camera out, his overhead, and you can see just how beautiful these, over, these fabrics are. So you can see, where are we there? 
So this is showing a little bit gray in this one. It's actually a light green, but that's just the camera. So you can see that's a beautiful um, green. You can see this plane, but it's not just a plane. It's got a beautiful fleck in it. And then you've got that beautiful dark gray and you can just see how beautifully thought out these fabrics are. Our design team has been working really hard to make sure we made something really beautiful for you. And you can see then you've got this wonderful white here with a background and this beautiful pink for your sashings and your borders and things and this gorgeous border fabric here as well. It's a really beautiful colorway. So each time we do a block, you are going to make either the vintage, either the vintage colorway or the blues colorway. So we can zoom in on the blue now and you can be able to see each fabric. You'll be able to then see the detailing on each fabric. So you can see we've got our lovely crosses there in that blue. We've got our dots on that one. And we've got that gorgeous colorway there. So these two are the same, this one and this, oh, that one and that one are the same. And then you can see that gorgeous background fabric as well. It's a really, really beautiful combination. So this is the blue colorway. And then, not to leave all the lovely people who like brights out, we've got our brights colorway as well. And you can just see how vibrant that is. Really, really, really lovely product. So what we're doing is this will be every single week for 13 weeks from today, every Friday at 9 a.m. And you'll be able to take part. Um, you'll be able to watch the demo. The demo will always be on our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to flick back at that every Friday show for, at 9 a.m. You'll be able to see exactly how it all works. Um, we're wanting to make sure that you're just able to you're all staying at home. We haven't got that much. We're running out of projects to do. We're getting a little bit bored. And this is just a really nice way of being able to stay entertained. But equally, it's something I am so incredibly excited about and I'm so proud of. I can't tell you as a designer how wonderful it is when you see something that's in your head that you put down on paper and you send out into the world um, and people make them online. It's just so heartwarming to be able to see people are making something that you've thought up and a design that you've come up with. It's really lovely. Unfortunately, these are only available at Sewing Street. You can't get these anywhere else. The fabrics are exclusive to Sewing Street and they're all just so much fun and the projects I promise you are really really easy to do I wanted to make sure that everything was very user-friendly the instructions are really really nice shall I show you that now so let's just look at the brights colorway first so first of all you're going to get your pattern so you'll get your pattern which will come to you like that is your first page you've got your second page there and then you've got these wonderful pictures of how to actually put everything together in what order to put them all together. So you've got a really wonderful pattern there. Very, very user friendly to be able to make sure that you know what you're doing. And then each week you'll get a panel like this, which will have all the fabric on that you need to make the block of that week. So this is what the panel looks like for this week. So this is block one of 12. And you can see that's the yellow. And if I slide this over here, you'll see the blue is next to it. So you can see it's a really big piece of fabric, this. This is more than two fat quarters as well. You can see it's a really big piece of fabric, that. Um, and I'm just double checking. So it's just under 90, just under, an, under 19 inches wide of fabric as well. So it's just under two fat quarters of fabric there. Really lovely. So that panel alone, you're looking at a huge chunk of money for that. But not today. But look at that. So that's really great. We've got that in the brights. Um, and then we've got the vintage colorway as well. So you can see how they're all coming to you like this. So you can see you've got the three there. And if I slide it that way, you can see. So that's the vintage colorway on that. And then also we've got the blue colorway. Obviously, I love my blue. And again, just like the other three, other two, you've got four different colors. They are all in one panel. And look at that. Now, 
So all of these look really, really nice. And you're getting a pattern with it as well. And you're getting me to tutoring you every week on doing it. If you did these at a class, oh, that would be ridiculously expensive, wouldn't it? And I'm really excited because, as you'll see, it's really not that expensive at all. Hmm? For the blue. We're just getting some graphics up for you now. So there are three different colorways, obviously. So when you're ordering it, you would then need to do pick your colors. So I'll sh shall I show you those again? So now that you've had a little look again, maybe you want to see the quilts before um, you go from there. So we'll start with the blue. So I'll hold this there and you can see the blue colorway. And the great thing about this quilt is you can see it's completely multi-directional. It doesn't matter which way you hold it. It's still very pretty. So this is the blue. So that is the, that's what your finished product will look like after 12 weeks. And then you've just got your sashing borders to go in as well. Um, then we've got our vintage colorway as well. So these are then all the different blocks that you're getting. Still all multi-directional, so even with these colorways, you can see it just completely works whichever way you have them. That's a really big block. So that's our vintage colorway. And then I'm going to bring our Brights colorway on. Perform my acrobatic trick. Three, two, one. Oh, no, didn't get that right. There we go. And then we've got our Brights colorway as well. So now you've seen each different colorway. Perhaps you've got an idea in your head as to which colorway you'd like to do it in. So we've got those. So if we start, should we start with the blue? So this is the blue colorway, and these will all come with a set of instructions. This is for the instructions, the fabric, and obviously then my tutorial each week, they're $11.99 for a week. Now, anybody who knows when you're buying a really good quality set of fat quarters, you're buying two fat quarters, those are gonna be quite a bit of money already. So you can see with the pattern, the fabric and the tuition for this block at $11.99 a week. That is not a lot. So that's there, and I'm going to just bring the instructions. Whoops. Not a problem. Just popping these back, sorry. So you're getting the instructions and this panel. Let me just do that. Oh, wrong way. And that is going to be eleven ninety nine a week. And there are twelve blocks for the month uh, for the quilts. Look at that. And these fabrics are so vibrant. Really, really, really lovely fabrics. These. And then I think next one should we do the next one in my bundle is brights. I think. Is that right? Yes, it is. So the block that that blue one's going to make, let me just show you the block that we're going to make today. That's going to be the block that we're making out of the one today. Whoops. And you will have so much fabric left over. When I start my demo, you'll be able to see how much fabric I had left over. So this is the Brights block. Just going to move this out the way. So this is the Brights block. You can see just how beautiful those colors are. And this is the bundle you're going to get. Let's hold this the right way around. So that's the instructions and the panel for $11.99. Now, anybody who's taken part in a Block of the Month before knows that's such a great value because Block of the Months are normally quite expensive and they're a lot more than that. And you don't get the tuition with that normally as well. So you'll be able to always refer back to the tuition 
and you'll be able to see just how simple it is to make these blocks. Really, really, really easy to do because I wanted to make sure that it was simple for everybody. So that's our blue. We've done our blue, we've done our brights. And now we've got our vintage colorway. You can see just how beautiful that colorway is there. So this one for the bundle we're getting on this one. Not only are you getting the instructions, but you're also getting the panel. And then obviously my tutorial each week, each time we do it. And I'm going to slide that across so you can see. And I thought I'd call it the welcome quilt because I'm still new to Sewing Street. So it's just my little welcome. And I'm hoping everybody's going to really, really enjoy it. So that's where we are on the panels. That's what you're going to get for each one. Um, and I'm really excited. I hope you are too. So let me start by showing you how this is going to work for this week. So this is a log cabin and anybody who's started quilting before will know just the log cabin's what you start at normally. It's a nice block to start with. Um, so at the moment in the demonstration I'm going to be using the Brights quilt. So we're going to be having one of these. This is the Brights panel, um, but I'm going to cut the blue panel because the cutting is quite important. I just need to show you that as well. But before I do that, I always want to know what I'm getting for free, if you like. So what I've done is I've cut out my fabric for my block. That's my block cut out. Now, I was a little bit silly and I didn't read the instructions, even though I wrote them. <laughs> And I cut my fabric out incorrectly. So I had those. Oh my goodness, that was unexpected. I've just heard that a quarter of the stock on all the bundles has sold out already. And we had hundreds of them. I am absolutely blown away by that. I'm so excited that you can all take part in it. I know you're going to have a really amazing time with us. Thank you for that. And the blue is apparently only just in the lead. I can tell why the colorways are so great on this. So what I wanted to show you here was, I like being able to show you how much you get left. So I've accidentally cut that fabric wrong. I've got all these little bits of fabric left over. And this is what I've got left of my panel. So not only are you getting enough to make the block, you're getting enough to make a mistake and these left over. So you've got a lot of fabric here. It's not just enough fabric for you to make the block. You are going to have more than enough to do extra bits with it afterwards. You're going to have some to have some little room for error. And of course, you're going to get a salvage with my name on it, which I'm very excited about. I love my little name on the salvages. So the first thing I need to show you here is on the cutting plan, you will see that, I'm just going to cover that there, you've got fabric one, and in this design, it's white. Okay, so it says fabric one. Now, white is not always going to be the fabric one. They're all different for each one. But what we did was on each panel, you will see a little note in the corner of your panel that says fabric one. So that's my fabric one in the brights range. That's my fabric one in the blue range. And then in the vintage range, where are we? So you'll see in the top left hand corner, your fabric one, it's written as fabric one in the top left hand corner. So this was my fabric one on the brights. This is fabric one on the blues. That's fabric one on the vintage. And then you've got fabric two and fabric three and fabric four. Now, the reason I made an error, and I'm telling you this in advance because you've still got enough fabric to do it, they don't go in order. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just this week they don't go in order. And the reason being is you need more of fabric three than you do of fabric two. So you'll see you've got fabric three is next. And then fabric two is underneath it. So if we leave the camera there, this is fabric one. I made the mistake of thinking that was fabric two, but it wasn't, that's fabric three. And then that's my fabric three for the brights. And then fabric two was down the bottom 
because you need less of it. And then fabric four is over here. Okay, so that's the only thing I need to tell you that I made a little bit of a blupsy on. And that is then in your instructions and you've got the cutting plan for fabric one, fabric two, fabric three and fabric four. And the colours that it refers to are on this page. So when you're cutting it out, just make sure that you read the top left hand corner of each of the colour pieces and you go from there. So that's the only little thing I think people need to know on that. Um, I told you earlier I'm going to cut the blue. I'm not going to cut the whole thing, but I think it's really, really important that I have a little chat with you about... Where's my ruler gone? Boom, boom, boom. There's my ruler. Many people have issues with 3 8 5 8 7 8 and things like that. So we're going to have a little bit of a maths class. Don't worry, it'll be really quick. So I chatted with Joe earlier and he has very kindly been able to get the camera zoomed in really nice and tight. I'm just looking for a sharp pointy thing and I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to ask Joe to move into this. Now many of you know this, so if you have this is extra knowledge for you, you don't need to listen. Some of you don't know this, so that's why I'm going to just take a few minutes to just show you where you're cutting. Perfect. Perfect. So we're going to zoom in here. Wait, where are you? The creative grids. Perfect. Right. So what we're going to do is the main cut here uses eighth of an inches. So let's just go between one and two. So that is zero eighths and that is eight eighths. So we know that if that is divided into eight, there are the eight pieces. So eight divided by two is four eighths, which is going to be a half. So you can see I'm definitely doing my maths here. So if this is four eighths, that one will be three eighths, that one will be two eighths or a quarter, and that'll be one eighth. So the way we count these out is it's one eighth, a quarter, three eighths, half, five eighths, six eighths, or three quarters, seven eighths, and then the whole number. So the reason I'm telling you this is that a lot of the cuts use either three eighths or seven eighths or one eighth, and I'm not going to tell you which one's which, reason being it's just important to know that that is your line for one eighth, that one there closest to my fingers is the line for three eighths, and then the one closest to two is seven eighths. So just know that that's what I'm talking about with this one eighth, two eighth, three eighths because it does get a little bit confusing and I want to just make sure that everybody is on the same page. If you get it wrong, there's enough fabric there, don't worry. Um, and if you, I'd rather you cut bigger and then trim down afterwards or had a really, really big um, seam, but I'd rather you cut it correctly the first time. That's just what's important to make sure that you can do that right. Mentioning seam allowances, you need to do a, a standard quarter inch all the way through. Um, if you do it smaller or you do it bigger, I'd prefer it was spot on, we all would, but just be consistent because if you're not, half your block will be bigger than the other half and you'll end up with a little bit of a wobble. That's fine, steaming presses everything and then it becomes your long arm as problem. But do try, if you can, to keep it to a quarter of an inch. So that's where we are on that one. And the great thing with this is you do not need any special rulers. The only thing I would say is if your ruler does have an eighth line on it, it will make your life a lot easier. If it doesn't have an eighth line on it, as long as it's got a quarter and a half, um, then you know it's three eighths is exactly in the middle of those two. And if it's a quarter and a, a hot, let's say it's the zero and a quarter, halfway between that is in an eighth and then seven eighths. But as long as your ruler's got a seven eighth line on it, your life will be very, very simple with that. You don't need anything more than that than your usual sewing kit. Um, I think a nice big mat is quite good. So this is a really lovely mat. We've mentioned this mat many times in the show before. Really lovely mat, this one. Um, it goes from 34 inches to 22, really nice big size. And you can see the fabric fits on beautifully on it. Nice bit, and ruler is quite good. So if you've got a six and a half by uh, six or six and a half by 24 by or 24 and a half inch ruler, that would work perfectly. And a decent rotary cutter with a fresh blade that you can lock and not hurt yourself with. You'll be fine with that. Pins would be handy as well. You can see we've got a lovely set of pins as well. So those are what I'm going to use on those today. So when you're cutting, um, I would always say to you, make sure that you cut your own line first so you can see 
I just put the ruler this side of where the pr it's printed, only because sometimes there may be a, it might not be a hundred percent straight. I'd rather you start off with a completely flat straight line. So cut along that line and then measure. Once you cut along that line, move your ruler this way, get your measurement correct, and cut accordingly, so that your ruler is then lined up with your straight edge. And other than that, I think that's everything. The instructions are very clear as to what you're doing and how you're going to cut it all out. Just make sure you've got the right fabrics. Um, and as I pointed out to you before, it says fabric one, fabric three, fabric two, and fabric four. So it's always in the top left-hand corner of each one. Make sure you're just checking which one's which. And if, like me, you do make it, did make an error, and it's, it's my, <laughs> I shouldn't have made an error, but it was my error there. But even if you have, it doesn't matter. You've got enough fabric to fix it. What I would say is a good tip when you're doing your cutting, um, when you've got your fabric one, I would take that out, cut it, and stick that there onto fabric one. And then when you go onto fabric two, cut that off and put it onto fabric two onto fabric three and fabric four. I just think that's a nice easy way that you can always refer back to it and you know what's what because hopefully you're able to do this every week with us but if you put this in a bag and come back later and you've lost these little pieces and you can't find them but you've got the pattern and you're thinking gosh what was my fabric one it's just so much easier that they're actually stuck to your pattern and then you'll always know where they are and a really top tip that I learned is somebody actually used their sewing machine to attach them onto the, um, onto the actual pattern. So what they do is if that's fabric one there, they put their fabrics along here. So we know that that's fabric two, that's fabric three. And then they stitched all the way along there. So they had the fabric off the edge of the page, but they always had those attached to them, which I thought was a genius idea. So it worked really, really well. So now let's just start showing you once you've cut everything out. I'm working with the bright um, pack today. Um, once you start cutting everything out, I'm going to lay it all out in the order. Hopefully, I've pulled this off correctly. Live telly, what could possibly go wrong? Right, so my first seam, I'm going to lay them all out and then I'll show you how we sew it all together. Now remember, I'm using the brights combination. Oh, I'm doing this the wrong way around. Always important to refer back to your pattern. Really key. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, sorry, I'm just looking for my, there we go. And then that one goes there. That one goes there. I think I'm making like Joe's life difficult here. This is a big block. This is about a 15 and a half inch block that we're making. So it's a nice, good size block, this. And there we go. So those are the, that's the layout very loosely before we start sewing everything together. And you can see according to the pictures where you are and how you're doing it. So now all that's left is to put my correct foot on and use this amazing sewing machine. So what I did earlier was I was playing with this machine. Oh, it's reverted back exactly where I needed it to be. I'm gonna pop this foot out. Sorry, I had it set up for my 10 o'clock demo. It'll be two seconds. Right, so the first thing it tells me is figure 1.1. I'm going to sew these two together now. I'm just going to check that my iron has switched on, and it is, because we're going to do a little bit of pressing after this. So again, make sure that if you can get, be as accurate as possible on your quarter inch, that would be ideal. And I've got my fabulous June Taylor pressing mat here. And my lovely little primer iron. Oh, which is caught up in my cabling. Sorry about this. Mm -hmm. 
Now I press my seams open, you don't have to. I have to say the most exciting thing for me on this is our very own Hayley Bryant and our very own Hayley Marshall say are actually taking part in this block of the month as well. And they are completely beginners to, to quilting. They've never made quilts like this before and they are so excited about it and I am as well. So they'll be able to post pictures and videos of what they're doing along the way as well. So that's the great thing is when you're posting your videos, when you're doing this and your pictures, pop them on the fans page. And if you've got any questions, I will happily be able to answer whatever I can for you. And you'll always be able to get some support on that as well. So it's not just the tuition on here. Um, you'll also be able to get support online as well. Oh, is Hannah doing it as well? Oh, fabulous. Oh, talk about a team effort. I love that. Joe's not going to do it. Joe, can we, can we encourage you to do it? Do you know who I want to see do it is Neil. I think Neil should do it. I think we should get Neil on once we're allowed to actually be in the same room together. Make sure that we can actually get him in to do a block on a demo. Wouldn't that be good? We should start a little poll for that, shouldn't we? So what I'm doing is I'm just sewing, so you can see I've now sewn three pieces together. And what you're doing with these log cabins is you're just going in a concentric circle. This one's anti-clockwise and you're sewing the next piece on as you go along. And all I'm doing is making sure I'm keeping a really strict quarter inch that's consistent. So even if it is a slightly different quarter inch, it's consistent. It's the same quarter inch all the way. I was having a bit of problems with the Juki yesterday and I put the bobbin in incorrectly, which is what we were having a few issues with yesterday. Please, that's all fixed up now. So all I'm doing now is I'm just pressing the seam open. And you don't have to press the seams open. I would just say press to the dark side if you're not going to. But you can just see on the inside of this block, when it's done, it just creates that really lovely finish. Um, and when you look on this side, there's no bleeding of fabrics around at all. So now we've done those. Um, I think I've cut that bit a little bit bigger than I should have. Oh, we've had a message in from Tracy. Morning, Tracy. She's saying, thank you, John. This is a wonderful block of the week. And she says, being in quarantine, it's a great project to look forward to. And I'm so glad you see it that way, because that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Oh, she's loving all the colorways of the project. Oh, we'd make all three if you like. Oh, I'm having a moment again, sorry. Come on, my friend. Does anybody else talk to their sewing machine when things don't go quite to plan? There we go. I'm so pleased that Tracy and people like Tracy are taking part that way. It's going to be lovely. And it is a really fun project and you can see the quilt itself is beautiful. And it's something you'll easily be able to treasure and look forward to. But it's also such great value as well for the fabric, the kit, and then the experience of actually taking part with everybody as well. It's really good. Now with these pieces, you'll see I've actually cut this a little bit longer. Um, so if you are ending up that it's a little bit longer, they're meant to all be exactly the same size. So that's meant to end at the same size. So if yours is slightly longer, prefer it was slightly longer than slightly shorter. In case you are, all you're going to do now is you're going to line your ruler up. Sorry, my head's in your way there. So you're going to line your ruler up. Ooh. Uh, there we go. You're going to line the ruler up and you're just going to trim off whatever is excess on the top. And I know, I'm 99% sure that was me just cutting that a little bit too late at night. So you can see now we've made our first full round of colours. 
And you're just going to repeat that all the way through. So the next one, you're going to attach that to there. And I know what's happened here. My seam allowance here yeah. is much bigger than my seam allowance there. That's why this piece at the bottom is slightly larger because my seam allowance there is too big. So if ever you do have a piece of fabric that's popped a little bit longer, re-measure it, check you've cut it the right size, or check your seam allowances. Now, it's not a problem if your seam allowance is too big. It doesn't matter. All that matters is you be consistent on it. So don't worry about it if it's a little bit out, because you just trim it down. Who's... who's... Carol from um, Durham. Carol from Durham has a question. Hello, Carol. Oh, Carol, you've asked a wonderful question. Her question was, how do you sew long strips together without them bending? That is a really, really good question, and I'll tell you what the issue is. In fact, I can show you once I've finished this seam. Give me two seconds. When you're sewing long strips together, let's just assume you're sewing these two strips together. You put them right sides together, you sew down this line, okay? Then you get the next piece in, so this is a little bit heavier, and you take the next bit there and you sew that together, top to bottom. What happens is, not only is the fabric weighing down on that seam ever so slightly there, if you're left or right-handed, you're going to be guiding the fabric in, so your hand automatically veers away from the needle. So what happens is you're creating this constant bit of pressure on one edge of your fabric. And what will happen is that over time the whole thing will bow out. And the way you stop that is, if you're sewing this edge from top to bottom, the next one you sew from bottom to top. And it's really important that you keep alternating that. So if this one has been sewn top to bottom, the next one will be bottom to top, next one will be top to bottom. And as long as you keep alternating that, what happens is the weight of the fabric and the way you're guiding it is counteracted on every single side that you're doing it, which is a nice easy way of making sure you don't end up with any bows in it. If you do end up with some bows, unfortunately, not all the time can you fix it. Um, try using a bit of steam to get it right, doing a bit of blocking, but normally it doesn't work, so you're kind of stuck with that bow. So just from the outset, make sure you're sewing from top to bottom, then bottom to top. But don't worry, we've all got it. We've all got a lovely log cabin or something that we've done, which has got a little bit of a wave in it. So all I do is every time I see mine, I just go, hello wave. It's just much easier. I know it's silly, but it makes me chuckle. Right, so we've done that one, and because my seam was a little bit wider in that one section, you can see I've got a little bit extra fabric on this. I trim as I go on this. You don't have to, and if you do, your block may be ever so slightly um, smaller, but don't worry, we'll fix that with the, with the sashing. There are many fixes with all of this. So again, now I'm sewing this one on there, and you can see this one is perfect. It lines up beautifully. So we now have a lead on who's ordering what, and the vintage is in the lead. Oh, I'm so excited. It is a lovely colorway. I have to say, I was quite stuck with which one to choose, because I was immediately, they said they were doing the blues. I was like, nope, blues are mine. And then when I saw the vintage, I was like, ooh. But the brights is also beautiful. So we have had, a, we've got hundreds of them for sale. Uh, they haven't sold out, but they are selling really fast. So what will happen is, if we do sell out of a particular colour, what we will do is next week on Friday at 9 o'clock, each week that we do them, we will try and then get some more printed of the colourways that were in the lead that we perhaps sold out of, and, and then we'll be able to offer you block one and two um, in when we do our second week. It's just obviously with production at the moment, we're not quite sure when and if we can do that and how, because skeleton staff and all that, we're just doing the best we can at the moment. Trying to keep you all entertained. So again, you don't have to press your seams open. It does take a little bit longer doing your seams open, but I do think you end up with a little bit of a nicer finish. And this June Taylor pressing mat is a really nice way of doing it because you press on it, 
and then you just come back and you put it on top of your work and it's all ready to go. So here you can see I'm ever so slightly out because of that seam allowance issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this exactly in the middle and I'm going to press it, I'm going to sew it from the, so this will go to the bottom. Just that way then I can make sure that I can keep my seams open and make sure that I'm not going to trap any seams there. So you can see all I've done is I've picked my fabrics up as I go and I'm just going in an anti-clockwise concentric circle of the fabrics. And I've, I've played one of my little tricks. At the moment, this piece of fabric, the yellow, was two or three threads of cotton wider than my top piece. So all I did was, while my needle's down, I've been pulling on the top piece, and you can see now my seams are exact. There's no overhang at all on either side. So that's a nice little tip that when you put your um, fabric that doesn't have any seams at the bottom and just chain, which is also a bit larger, line it up nicely on this end and then just give this a tiny little tug along the way, ever so slightly, you didn't even see that I'd done it and then the fabric meets up perfectly so you can then ease in any seam allowance issues, you can ease that in really beautifully there. Oh my word, I have an announcement. This is really exciting news. We've had a message in from Neil, and Neil has agreed he's going to do one block. As long as it's a really hard one. Neil, you're doing the, the flying geese triangles, because that one is really hard. Oh, that's really exciting. You see, the whole team's getting involved. I'm so glad. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Neil. That's really made my day. Now we just need to get Joe to do an easy one. Joe's ignoring me now. The speech in my ear has stopped completely. And you can hear cackling, I'm sure. <laughs> Wonderful. So you can see that that's going really, really nicely now. So we'll just recap what we did. We first sewed this one onto that one. And then we sewed that one onto those two together. Then this one onto the piece there, because you can't really see, but there's a seam there. Then you've sewn this one on there, so you've made another square. Then you've attached that to the square. Then you've attached that one. We've attached that one. And now we're attaching this one. So we've only got five more seams and our block is done. Isn't this a really fun project? It's just so easy. It's just nice, easy sewing. It's brilliant. Remember I told you about that little fabric adjustment? We're doing it again. There we go. Now this one I'm using a sewing machine at the moment, but you can actually do this by hand. Um, I've had a, a, a lady do this, uh, do another project that I only used a sewing machine for, and she did it by hand, and it was beautifully done. So you can very easily do this by hand. It just means you're sewing all your... Um, Long seams by hand, very easily done. Just takes a little bit longer. Nothing wrong with that. So you can see why I take that time just to do this, pressing this open. You don't need to, you can just press to the dark side. I just think it makes the back of the block look so good as well. Oh, there we go. So there we go, we're now at another square stage there. You can see we've only got four left to go now. And if ever you're a bit stuck as to what goes on next, always just look and see where the next piece of fabric is that fits. So you can see that one there, that one there, and that one there, that's the next one on. We've had a message in from Christine, she's watching us today. Hello Christine. She's loving the show. Had a question in for the newbies, yes. Um, okay, so that's a very good question. Does she, do I recommend pinning for newbies? Um, yes, I do. I don't pin myself. I've never pinned, which is why some of my early work looks so atrocious. Pinning really does help, and it just depends what works best for you. If you are pinning, I suggest doing one at the beginning, 
one at the end, and then I would do sort of maybe three or four in, on length this size, which is about 10 inches, 12 inches. I would do one every sort of two inches. And it's entirely up to you. The only thing I will say is, please, I beg you, do not sew over your pins. If your needle hits a pin, the pin can shatter and it can fly everywhere. It can damage your needle. So please, even the very, very fine entomology pins, please don't sew over your pins. That's my only tip on that. You know what I'm looking always like with elf and safety, in it. I'm so pleased this has been going so well. So we've got about 10 minutes left on this hour, so I should have enough time to sew all three of these together to finish the block. Oh, what have I done there? Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. I'm just going to re-sew that beginning bit. Not sure what happened there. So, three more to go and our block is done. And again, if you want to make this quicker, you can just press these seams to one side. There's nothing wrong with that. There is no right or wrong. It's just what works best for you. And if you want to press it from the top as well, this one I'm going to press from the top because I did a little bit of um, fabric manipulation. And you can see that, that you can't even tell that I stretched that to make it fit. So now I've done that one. And now we're doing this one. Now I know I'd cut everything out and have everything ready and I am a reasonably intermediate accustomed to sewing quite quickly but you can see this block has only taken about 30 minutes to do and that's with me wittering away telling you all the bits and bobs as well so it is quite an easy process to be able to do this block so it's not going to be very overwhelming as we progress through the project you may find it takes a little bit longer and I may have a bit more prepped before we come but it is a lovely lovely product and I'm very proud of this design I think it's wonderful and I'm so glad so many people are taking part right only two more to go so I always make sure because the number of times just put it back and make sure you check it back to the picture because at this point it is very easy to then sew that on there and it's wrong. Make sure you double check your picture. The way, top way to check it is the lights are always with the lights and the colours are always with the colours. So only two more seams to go. I'm so excited, our 10 o'clock show, I'm showing you how to use this Juki, this amazing NX7 machine. Um, and you can see I've been using it so lovely, it's a beautiful machine. Oh, I'm giving it a bit more willy than I normally should have. But that's not even got my foot to the floor either. It's a beautiful machine, this, you really, it is lovely. So if you haven't seen this before, that'll be on at 10 o'clock. And there we go, pressing the second last seam open. And now we've got the last seam to go. So there we go. Put that on there. So I'm working with the Brights um, bundle at the moment. We've got three different colorways, being the blue and the vintage and this beautiful Brights one. 
So you're going to be spoilt for choice on which one to choose. Who's winning at the minute, Joe? Last time we heard, I think the vintage was a little bit in the lead. We've now sold half the stock of the vintage and the blue, so that's gone now. And the brights are catching up nicely. More than half the stock gone on, on the vintage and the blue. That's wonderful. And here we go. Last seam. I'm going to press this open. And then when I've pressed the seam open, I'm going to press it from the front as well. And that is then your finished block. Now, if you are a complete beginner, um, I want you to do two things for me. I want you to make sure that you're having fun. This is meant to be fun. You're meant to enjoy it. And if your seams aren't right, no one is going to mind. The person you're making the quilt for is not going to care if your seam is slightly out. All they're going to care about is that it's made with love and that you enjoyed it. So remember, this is fun. The second thing just to remember is that we want this to be a learning experience for you. So what you'll do is you will measure your quilt, measure your quilt block, and you'll see why you're out. So I'm a quarter of an, I'm a, about an eighth of an inch short on this. So if you aren't exactly 15 and a half inches, I want you to open your quilt block up and have a look. Now I can see immediately my pink here is too wide. That's perfect, that's perfect. That one's a little bit too thin. Go and look at the back of your quilt block because that's how we learn. If you know that you've made a little bit of a, 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 a wider seam there than you should have, you then can make a decision. Do you unpick that, iron everything flat again, and then sew it back on? That's entirely up to you. There is no right or wrong on it. All I'm interested in is that you make sure that you turn it over, you have a look. If you've made something slightly longer than it should be, you know why. You don't have to unpick it. There's nothing wrong. This block will fit perfectly into your quilt. But if it is slightly different, this is why we learn. We learn from our mistakes. And it's, I, I hate using the word mistake because it implies you've done something wrong because you haven't. This is meant to be fun, but it's also meant to learn. So if you want to, flip it over and have a look and see where the errors are. And there we go. That's our finished block. So this is our Brights collection. Um, the one I've made earlier for the blue collection, that's that one there. And I'm just going to pop my June Taylor cutting uh, ironing board over there. What have I done with my vintage? There it is. And that's the vintage one. Wow, I've just heard now our early bird has sold out. I'm not surprised. Such a great, great product there. Well, well done to everybody who got it. So now we're going to just go through the patterns and the bundles of what you're doing. So um, we've shown you all the panels earlier. This will be what you'll get for the vintage. You'll get a full panel with loads of fabric left over. So this is going to be the vintage colorway. You're going to get a full set of instructions with a vintage colorway. And you'll have loads of fabric left over that you can do other projects with or have a little bit of a play. The next one is our blue uh, colorway. So this is going to be what your finished block will look like with the instructions. Um, and that will be then be $11.99 uh, for this fabric panel and the instructions. And then we've got the last one, which is our Brights collection. So this is what you're going to have then for the Brights colorway. And again, you'll have the instructions and that's $11.99. This one's catching up to our vintage and our blue color colorway. Oh, so I hear the vintage is just tipping it ever so slightly there. So that's really, really exciting. What a wonderful, wonderful hour there. I'm so pleased you're enjoying it. Next, we have this fabulous Juki sewing machine. I am so excited about this because it is such a wonderful machine. So I will be doing that after the break. Uh, we're going to have a couple of... Um, messages and announcements um, between now and resetting everything up for the next hour. Thank you all so much for your time and joining in with this amazing project. I am so, so proud and so grateful that you could be a part of it. It's going to be a wonderful experience and make sure you share all of your pictures, any questions, any queries, pop them on the Facebook uh, Sewing Street TV or the Sewing Street fans page and we'll happily be able to answer any questions and I'm really looking forward to seeing how you all get on. Thank you all so much for your time and I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs>